I'm just out here trying to spend my 4th of July, you know, trying to finish my novel, you know, The Art of the Trick. And evidently, this book's not even relevant anymore. Fucking wrestlers won my fucking event? Hello? Hello, wrestlers? Do I need to write Fist Me Daddy, the story of two Goki players? Like, I don't know what's going on out here, but Hawaii Robbie just trying to enjoy his little vacation, and you all out here changing the metagame on me. <sighs> well, Fist Me Daddy, work in progress will be coming to you later this year. Hopefully. I don't know where we put Summon Sorcerers on the cover, but we'll figure it out. <sighs> I hate Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's dig into this metagame discussion, shall we? Hawaii Robbie's supposed to be vibrant, lovely, but we have to do a metagame discussion. Which means I can't sit alone in the corner pretending like I'm in Hawaii. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. So, it's July. You know what that means? Summon Sorceress! Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's to the extent in which I can do that voice. So, the metagame... We're gonna, here, here's my here's my constant stagnant flowchart of shit, and then this is Goki, and down here Ghost Sky Strikers. You see that? Lovely. I'm glad we could follow each other. Probably was blocked out by an image, but it's okay. So, summon sorceress. To everybody that's complaining, oh no, the TCG and the TCG. What do you mean the TCG? Oh no, the American metagame and the European metagame are so different. Sorry, Shonen Jump picked the card, not us. Uh, at least you guys will know you're getting summon Sorceress legal at some point. Like, like Karibo, I guess. But there are stagnant metagame differences. Um, I'm predicting up until August, if you're playing anything this month, you're going to be in a very Goki shit-infested hole. Uh, Dark Goki gets to literally go live now. Um, you know what? On top of Dark Goki... Uh, other variants. Every deck's gonna do the same fucking thing to you. Uh, Thumbin Thorthnerith, uh, Extra Link, uh, Topological Gumbler Dragon. Yay! <laughs> it's, it, there's not a lot to really say to you. It's just, I'm gonna get beat over the head when the Goki player goes first. Uh, there, there are some very easy methods for you to avoid getting Gumblard. Uh, let's pull up the flow chart, shall I? Number one. Did you open a hand trap? Yes or no? If you answered yes, you probably get another turn. If you answered no, you are dead. Number two. Did you open up a second hand trap? If you answered yes, you survive another turn. If you answered no, you're probably still dead. <laughs> you know, a lot of these decks can play around two hand traps. Or, yeah, one hand trap you might be okay depending on the hand. A lot of decks can play around two hand traps. Let me ask you... The next question. Are you playing three hand traps? Did you open three hand traps? If you answered yes, you're not winning the event. You probably brick somewhere along the way. If you answered no, you're still dead. Alright, are you following here? This has been a very, very good life lesson for Goki. Uh, Goki, if you play hand traps, they somehow manage to still recover from an extra link you, and they burn two more cards from Gumbar's hand. Your worst case scenario, you're going to three cards for turn, and that's withdrawing for turn. Good luck making some sort of combo-esque play on that board. I, I, I don't see you being able to do it, and it's, it's just so ridiculous. The power scaling that Goki has will only continue to rise at this point. I'm not trying to suck it off and say, oh, <laughs> Goki's the best deck. That's, that's not my intent. You need to be aware that Gumblar, Summon Sorceress, the, the whole standard Link Karibo engine, we're probably going to be going into a little bit heavier of a hand draft format to counteract these things. Um, Droll Knockbird is a very fantastic out um, to it. Um, you guys already know I've, I've heard many complaints about Drawn Lockbird in the past. It's not a good card <laughs> um, by any stretch of the imagination from what a lot of people have said, which is fine. Um, but nonetheless, you still have a card that gives you the ability to survive to the next turn. You know, Ash isn't as good as Ash once was. I love Ash Blossom as a card. I really do. But just... 
if I know I'm going into a much heavier format, I, I definitely think that we need to just be more prepared um, for things. Now, that's Goki. All right, like, there's there's not much else to say about it. The the stealing caused by Gumblar's release and summon sorcerers being legal only goes through the roof. Now, combinations with Trick Stars. Now, I say I, I bring up this point with Trick Star because there is both the variant of Mech Knight and Sky Strikers. Now, Sky Strikers are the one with the much higher ceiling. Um, and I, I can attest to this, uh, being somebody that doesn't really know what the fuck they're doing with Sky Striker Trickstar, when I see the potential core and things coming out of it, I would understand that, for lack of a better word, I'd be very ignorant um, to producing the combos on my first couple of tries. You know, but once you learn these things, I'm sure it'll be good to go. But <sighs> the Trickstar Sky Striker variant has a very high ceiling. You have end of match procedures working in your favor. You also get Trickster Reincarnation for Disruption, and with the Mech Knight engine, you have a method to go second? Question mark? You know, the Trickstar variants combinations, we've seen it in the past with True Draco combining with other variants, even Invoked. Um, you reach this point to where you change things up, you know, you get different combinations, different synergy. But, for the most part, this is, this is your life. Now, those are the two big ones. Uh, the little child sitting at the table still, actually, is our boy Pendulum Magicians. And th this guy earns his spot here. So, he went all the way. He was the lone Pendulum player. He sat there and he rode all the way to the top. I believe there's also another top eight um, Pendulum Magician player in WCQ in South America this weekend, actually. Out of nowhere, well, we knew it was there. I've been I've been touching on this a little bit. Pendulum magicians, like they're dead. It just took somebody a little bit of time to come up with a list that actually works, and we've actually seen, you know, success with this, and that's awesome. Do you know how long we've been waiting for pendulum magicians to come back? You know, to those of you that believed in the deck, I was not one of the believers, so, you know. I, I knew in the back of my mind that Chronograph was a good card, but, like, I didn't put much more with it. Besides, you know, like, dinosaurs. But, you know, congratulations, Pendulum players. You got success here, you know. Take advantage of it. Now, the rest of Top Cut from this weekend, it's pretty much what we've we've known. You know, you've got things like Pure Mech Knights. You've got Paleo. You've got... Pure Sky Strikers. What the hell happened to Pure Sky Strikers? Like, Pure Sky Strikers had a pretty decent representation across the pool. Burning Abyss did nothing here. You know, <laughs> differences in metagames, 17 players, or 1700 players, you have different mentalities across these metagames. I think it's very important that people understand these, you know, especially in the case of Burning Abyss. You have a fantastic wizard. <laughs> um, you have somebody that's cordially very good with the deck. They know what they're doing. They know the key plays. They've played the deck for a long time. They're a connoisseur, per se. Um, you you have that here in the TCG, but on different levels. You know, Calvin Tahan with ABCs and so forth. But for the most part, the deck was not successful here. Can't really say I'm surprised, but... Pendulum Magicians and Goki. Well, we're also in a much heavier Goki format than the rest of the world is. And the last big one here. This one actually shocks me. There were two Spiral Sky Striker. Two. Let that sink in for a moment. Two. So, I've seen, I've seen a little bit of this list. Um, kind of coming out of the woodwork a little bit. Um, and I was... Um, it doesn't surprise me actually. Is that wrong? Uh, I've seen a lot of people trying to play the hybrids, um, additional starter capabilities with drones, and it actually looks like it decently worked out, and I can appreciate that. Um, 
though I, I will still I will still kill, yeah still continue to say that Goki Sky Strikers or Goki's and Spirals are essentially still the same deck. You produce an extra link. You try to basically drown out the opponent's deck, and not allow them to play the game. Basically, both decks do the same thing fundamentally, but unfortunately, Spirals are much worse at their game plan. You know, Sleepy Boy is a good alternative to Gumblar. It's just you're destroying the stuff as it hits the field, basically, instead of disrupting it from the hand. But both decks have their own quirks. Don't get me wrong. They're both extremely cute in what they want to do. But the the game plan, it, it's still the same. Produce extra link, go! But the metagame is shifting in favor of Gokis right now. Um, do be aware that if you are playing competitive, we have officially gone one step more degenerate. Yay! Altergeist was nowhere to be seen at the top 32 of the NAWCQ. Altergeist have long since, we, we know they're a good deck, don't get me wrong, but the further away that that deck goes from a potential ban list, just you stay over there in the corner for when we need you in another dark time, Altergeist. That's what we are hoping for. Like, as long as they continue to sit in the corner with Spiral and Mermails in the tier two column, they will get their chance to come back. And I think it's very important to understand this. Um, also, shout out to the guy that played Zodiac. Um, I saw him posting in um, Zodiac. He was saying that he got enough. He did one of those, like, was it 1,000 likes, 500 likes, and he will play the deck. He lost on the bubble for the chance, I believe, to day two. That is spectacular. And I gotta give it to him, man. You know, taking Pure Zoo to the WCQ, that's impressive. And you definitely deserve the shout out. Um, you would have made a lot of dreams come true had you crossed over into that threshold. Um, so that was an interesting fun fact coming from the WCQ for the Metagame Report. Very, very easily, you know, you just gotta squeak in under that X2. That's all you, all you gotta do. But. You can really play anything in this metagame, as long as it was once good, and you still have a chance. Fun fact. Well, that's all I got for this, guys. Tell me how wrong Hawaii Robbie is down in the comment section, as always. And, well, that's all I really got for this video. Do Serenos. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.